Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forge Delights Forever promotional series. It's 3v3 pro level ladder action this afternoon, exciting stuff as always. Uh, first of all, quick message coming in from our dear leader, our lord and saviour, chief developer Jip. He would like to let people know about uh, ye old forum thread and if do you know what, know what we're doing here, get it up in the screen. That would help, there you go, clicked on the right thing in the end always helps. Uh, so yes, he wants to direct everybody's attention to this forum thread here, which I will post in the I will post in the description below this video. It's all about the developer's iteration three, catchy title if ever there was one, and he just wants to let people know, of course, that uh, you can check out new proposed changes and what have you in the FAF develop and uh, it's got all sorts of interesting things. We've got changes to mobile factories. The Tsar potentially losing its carrier capability. Not that that many people used it. I always thought that was a bit of an under, underused little option there on the carrier, but people just didn't make use of. It sounds like it might be going anyway. Megalith gets to keep his. I'm not sure what's happening with the rest of it, but you can check it all out for yourself context-based templates about time the template system got an overhaul looks like they're working on that distribute orders giving all sorts of do you know what if we can have some orders which help the way things are constructed so that build capacity and engineers don't spend the whole time bumping into one another that would be great not sure if that's what this is about but again you can check it out for yourself so there's tons and tons of stuff there do go and have a look at that guys it will be in the description below this video and if it's not you know what to do yell at me until i make it so uh, and uh, yeah, I do check. I check comments every now and again, periodically, especially when they're abusive ones, because uh, I'm a bit of a masochist like that. So anyway, on to today's game. As we said, it's going to be three v three ladder. It's going down on a generated map. I'm ready. You guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ching, ka ching. Alrighty, well talk about the map in just a second we'll let them gate in we'll call this team one up here at the top left and this team two down here at the bottom right going first for team one at the top of the screen because why not we have yoji there he is going cybrin in electric blue opening first land team member number two for team one in this season's fabulous vivacious violet it's furfa there he is going uef opening first land and last but not least for team one down here in baby blue on the causeway it's psycho ad or psycho ad we'll call him psycho today for short going cyber and how terribly appropriate opening first land so that's team one Two Cybrins and a UEF. Let's take a look at Team 2 now, starting down here at the bottom right in Burgundy Red. It's Taffy. Give it a tap, tap, tap a -roo. Taffy. There he is. And uh, he's going UEF, opening first land. And as we've already said in Burgundy Red, team member number two for Team 2 over here. I guess this would probably be rear guard air position. If anyone's going to be doing air, it's going to be the chap at the back in the middle. Uh, that should be a song, should it? Chap in the back in the middle. Uh, it's The Doctor. There he is, going Seraphim in Halib Orange Orange, opening first land. And last but not least, for Team 2 on the causeway over here, it's Kane. That is not Brotherhood of Nod Kane, rather Michael Kane. And I won't be doing that impression throughout this cast, so you can breathe easy. Uh, there he is, going UEF. That's a good play, especially against the Cybrin for a causeway chappy. And he's going first land, second land, third air in Ferrari Red. So there we have it. Two UEF and a Seraphim for Team 2. What's the map situation? Well, they didn't get much in the way of the reclaim side of things. That's for sure. There's a bit on the causeway. Some in the top left and the bottom right. And then a hundred mass apiece on the side island. And that's it. Big old voids of reclaim here and here. But goodness, would you look at the sheer quantity of potential mass extractors. So the reclaim not the end of the world and I like it we can call it the sentence effect I like the double pond situation or the sentence style layout pretty funky there's not much in the way of defensible terrain over here and here so if uh, this side loses top pond that could be very dangerous if the same on this side as well nothing to stop a cybern player from sprouting legs and just walking in here or indeed a uef player from standing right standing floating guile okay uh, right on the edge of the coastline here and just lobbing cruise missiles deep into enemy territory so there we have it we've already got an acu 
moving to the bottom left, and we've got a little bit of lab play underway by the looks of things from Michael Kane. It's really hard not to do the impression. I know I said I wasn't going to, but it does seem natural. But anyway, here we go. Bernard, Terence, and Sinjin. Dear old Sinjin there, giving them some readout, knocking trees as they go. Not particularly stealthy. Do we have some kind of force countering this? Yep, good interpretation of a likely attack. Or intuition, rather, interpretation. Psycho bringing in some Mantis and getting botched initially. They do manage to kill a combat scout, but two mech marines make it out. Admittedly, I think Terence has seen better days. 4 HP left on board that mech marine. He's probably going to get gizzarded. Uh, transport away, making a play for the bottom left. That's coming in from Furfa. Looks like there's five units of build capacity on board, but might not make landfall. Would you look at this? Taffy committing to this play to the bottom left with both his comm and interceptor coverage, but I don't think he's going to be able to shoot that courier down. All five units of build capacity will make landfall. However, that inbound comm is not far away. Taffy going super aggressive on the ground here. We also have a comparable play up at the top of the screen. Yoji moving to the wards the top right, but just a little bit behind the pace compared to his mirror on the opposite side of the map, who's now also committing T1 bombers to the action, hoping no doubt to kill off some of these engineers before they manage to complete a land factory that would make his takeover all the more easy to accomplish. Are they going to complete the factory? No. <laughs> That's very unlucky, but there is another engineer moving up, and that will complete just as the second bombing run takes him out. But still, what's one factory now going to accomplish against the commander? There is the opposing commander, Furfa. He's brought his comm to the south. And now we're going to get a little bit of a war, I'm guessing, between these two positions. But Taffy, first of all, has to dismantle this recently constructed land factory, which he's going to do with a reclaim beam. Best way to do it. Recent, re uh, I don't know what's going on today. Words are hard. I've started a new workout re regime, and uh, it's affecting the way I speak, which probably means I'm pushing myself too hard. Uh, Yoji is about to make landfall but he's already actually dropped off some units ahead of his comm he's got five units of build capacity on the ground and is working on the third land factory as opposed to the doctor which only has one online there goes the second three units of build capacity there for him has managed to spit out a tham where is the comm he's needed now more than ever He's to try and rescue these engineers, but now we have a Mantis on the field. The Tham ignoring the Mantis, trying to take down as many engineers as possible before he goes down. Three engineers remain, and finally the Tham gets taken care of. T1 Bomber brought in. What's happening in the center? We've got some com-on-com -com action there between Kane and Psycho. Psycho, of course, is the Cybrin yielding. A little extra HP in this encounter, whopping 2,000 HP advantage to Kane and Psycho now without ground forces for assistance. Kane bringing in reinforcements all the time, so Psycho tentatively making his way towards that bottom pond there for some coverage in case he needs to dip into it. Oh, we've got a second com from Team 2 traversing this bottom pond. Now the Doctor is moving in to assist Taffy in this bottom left-hand corner, or is he? Maybe he will make landfall somewhere over here. No, he has got the waypoint set down here, so it looks like he's coming directly to the bottom left-hand corner for the time being. Nice aerial supremacy achieved there in the bottom left-hand corner as well for Taffy. Very well done, sir. What's happening now? Back in on the top right. Goodness me, six, seven minutes in, and it already feels like an awful lot has happened. Yoji has made landfall with his com setting up shop with some resourcing options however the doctor reasonably well established now one unit of t1 pd working on a second we can get two or three of those up before yoji commits with his commander he might manage to hold out here but yoji does have a merry band of mantis at his beck and call what he really needs is more of those reducers to roll on in and take out the T1 PDs at the moment. He's going to utilize them just to harass some of the factories. And you know what? 
just going to go to split screen here because we've got multiple fronts and there's multiple things we need to keep an eye on. Gun upgrade on the way for Taffy on the bottom left hand corner. The Doctor is now moving up to that other coastline. It looks like he wants to try and hamper naval production over here which is going down for Psycho. Yoji pushing hard now at this base in the top right hand corner and the causeway is on fire and Kane is actually down on HP against Psycho. Actually no he's not, he just looks that way because he gets that extra HP buffer. It is 9k a piece pretty much and reasonable amounts of spam on either side. Yoji his attack failed, still two operational T1 point defense but he's got plenty more units to come in with another attack. Kane meanwhile down into the yellow here, not faring well at all. Are we going to see an early ejection inside 10 minutes? He's down to about 5,600 hit points. Psycho on the other hand still pretty comfortable on about 8,700. Kane does have backup in the area but he's still Got a lot of inbound fire raining down on that comm. Achieves a rank in veterancy. That gives him a little bit more breathing room. But immediately, almost it seems, back down to 5,000 hit points. Psycho continues to push. However, he is running out of his own units in the area. He's going to have to be careful here. A sensible play would be to drop back. Always difficult when you get your opponent on the ropes. But he's taking a lot of inbound fire and he doesn't need to. Needs to get on the run now. 6,400 hit points remaining there. Yoji still encountering spam up at the top right hand corner. And I think the longer this goes on, that commander is going to make all of the difference. One unit of T1 point defense taken out. There's another one queued up up here. Engineers will get to work on that once that top factory is done, but it's not going to be enough. Yoji with that gun upgrade on that comm takes out the second PD and is now chewing away at the southern factories. This position at the top of the screen here lost for the Doctor. He's going to have to work on reinforcing this one. Back in on the center, Kane and Psycho still going at it. Kane on about 4,400. Psycho on about 5,400 but both of these players low. I was about to say both of them low on units but not at all. Kane's units were just hanging off the edge of the screen there where I couldn't see. The Doctor did move up to engage some of these facilities. You can see what a good job he's done. There were three naval yards or so when he moved up here. There is now only one for Psycho Ad. I think we need to zoom out, take stock of the naval situation because it is important. Got lots of vessels coming in here from the south for Taffy, but it's evenly matched, I would say, with frigates out there from Psycho, the only problem is is some of these units are subs and all of these are frigates with no torp capabilities. Engineers counter that by getting to work on some torpedo launchers. Well done there, that's good awareness. But there is no, repeat, no naval presence from Team 2 in the top pond and that is bad. They're basically just giving up on that. And that will make life very, very difficult for Kane on this large, open and potentially vulnerable plane here. No cliffs, remember, no mountains to block inbound fire. A few Salems, they can take out these fringe resource points at range before pushing deeper inland with their naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie. Speaking of naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie, Yoji continuing his attack, facing no ACU opposition just moves on to the next base having taken this one out up at the top right descends further to the south three land factories here none of them producing anything so the doctor has given up on those so another win here for team one it's absolutely vital that team two get some wins down here in the south be it the destruction of these naval facilities or some kind of incursion over here. But at the moment, they're on the back foot in the bottom left-hand corner as well as Furfa has brought his comm to this island. And actually, Taffy has backed away. I don't know whether he was moving up here to try an incursion on this second landmass. But he's having to pull his comm back into the fight now to try and hold on to this bottom left-hand corner position. Taffy's got about 8,800 HP. And Furfa is on about 8,400. Has managed to kill off that T1 point defense, however. Needs to keep on the move unless he wants to keep eating unnecessary Lobo fire. Furfa on 6,001. 8,007 for Taffy. 
It's a T2 engineering suite versus a gun upgrade. Yeah, he's going to have to get into the water here, Furfur. He's not going to win that fight. So for the time being, at least Team 2 going to hang on to that bottom left-hand corner island. Yoji seems to be faring pretty well in the air game, meanwhile. Clearing the skies above his vessels, which are now looking to blockade this coast. That is a lot of ground spam as well on the middle for Kane. Let's just do a quick head count of basic T1 armoured units. 32 Mantis on the field there for Psycho. Kane has 45, so a little advantage there. But he's got a lot to worry about now, especially as T2 naval vessels turning up on his coast here from Yoji. Cruiser with immense reach. Just has to park here. He's going to be able to hit all of this with that siren. And now things not looking particularly great for Team 2. Kane has made the transition to T3 land and has a couple of Percy's or three Percy's and a Titan up here. Yoji saw that and guessing and thought, yeah, maybe I shouldn't continue pushing further south. And he might actually lose this little forward bridgehead or beachhead rather that he erected in the last five minutes or so. No point in hanging on to that unless he's got some good access to overcharge and preferably some reinforcements to boot. Doesn't want to get himself alphaed by those Percivals. Taffy, again in the water. Admittedly, there are air units loitering in the sky above him for Furfur. Doesn't want to eat any gunship attacks. Might find himself eating a torpedo bomber attack if he's not careful. This is not looking good for Team 2. Psycho. In danger of breaking through a little bit here on the causeway with the assistance of this siren. And look at the sheer quantity of empty mass points. They've all been taken out. Wrecks on almost every single one of them. Scratch that, every single one of them. Kane has managed to clear this position out. What's going on here? That one engineer and one Medusa. Interesting. Engineer probably <laughs> that lasted long. Engineer was probably there just for a little bit of reclaim. Another transport inbound also. Well, that's been cancelled after seeing what happened to their brethren. Not a terrible decision in my mind. So we've got a shield upgrade on the way for Kane to complement his gun. T2 upgrade on the way for Doctor also to complement his gun. Nano repair on the way for Psycho. He's already got stealth and a gun upgrade going to be an interesting dynamic on this central causeway here. Is he going to be allowed to finish? Yes, he is. Very close to completion by the time I'd said that. There are a couple of inbound Percivals. Getting tickled away at by the Cerberus turrets, but a nice overcharge will chop down one of them. One of the Cerberus turrets defeated. And there goes the second. Psycho might have to Make a play for the water here. Another Percy down. Two more inbound, however. And we've got some Bernies coming in for Psycho. Four of them, to be precise. Should be more than enough to alleviate the pressure that Psycho was under. Psycho up to about 11,000 HP. But this has been crucial. We said something needed to break for Team 2 to stay in this. And it was the bottom pond. It looks like they're going to get naval supremacy there. Locking Psycho Ad out of that bottom pond. And now putting all of this under threat. Only problem is Team 1 are in a more advanced stage of that in the top pond. Kane erected a firebase. It's not going to last very long. What he really needed was a few units of artillery under there. And that's going to be the end of that. All through gunships being deployed to whack some of the inbound T1 spam from Psycho. Doctor, as we said, prioritizing air. Is Furfa doing the same? 
Perfect is doing the same. Is he producing strap bombers? Looks like it. Ambassadors on the way for him. A couple of air superiority fighters dispatched to deal with those gunships. And deal with them they will. Or at least two of them. Oh, and the third one just hangs around. Don't forget me! <laughs> they won't. They won't, says Furfur. But now we're getting some ASFs emerging for the Doctor. Both of these air players reaching similar levels of air tech at about the same time. There goes the Ambassador. Jamming activated. Where is he headed? Don't think even he knows. Circling at the moment over the top of Psycho's base. Is it going to be brought to bear on this bottom left-hand corner? Ah, it's going after some Riptides. This is a nice little run-by we've had here. So the Riptides that went to that little coast a while ago, they just pushed all the way through. They didn't stop, came up that western approach and have got into the back here of Furfa's base. Build capacity hurriedly erecting defences. They're going to get massacred. They have managed to get one plasma cannon online which is a good effort. Riptide's starting to dwindle in number now so they're dispatched to the top left hand corner of Furfa's base to try and kill what mass points they can. T2 mechs down there. Can they bag a second? Got another point defense that's in range. Strap bomb has been deployed to take care of them, along with these stingers. What's a nice little play, though. Look at that. That push through. Right up into the back of Furfa's base. But uh, this is what we were worried about. Walkie, walkie, naughty, naughty. There they go. Just rotten cybern boats. Filthy spider legs. Couldn't have anything nice as well, like swimsuit model legs. Has to be spidery. Strap bomber out as well from Yoji. He's got a handful of ASFs to escort it. How many kills has that had on its way through? Well, that was its first kill. He's only got 55 HP left, and he's being pursued with vigor. By. Oh, but what have we got there? Psycho Ad down in the middle. Taken down by Kane. We might do a little bit of a recap at the end to catch what happened there. Nice work. Must have been those Percivals. I don't think there'll be any great mystery there. But then Kane gets locked onto as well by a handful of stingers from Furfa, who's looking to repay the compliment. Kane heading to. That southern river, that southern point where his friendly vessels linger. Those gunships forced to back off in the face of three, no, five, sorry, UEF cruisers. It's a lot of flak, more than they'd be comfortable taking. Nice work there from Kane. So the first person down is actually a man from Team 1, and Team 1 looked like they were doing so well. We haven't, not once have we mentioned the eco situation, and Team 1 are comfortably ahead here. If we look at generated eco, it's nearly 400 versus 316. So, they need to start taking down some of the resourcing options around here, but it's not hard to see why. Just look at the encroachment. The effective area of the map is well under 50% map control. For Team 2. I'm not sure how much more it is for Team 1. They are sitting on this area up here as well, but these are mostly T1 reactors. So I'm thinking it's probably just a case of better backfield development. 22 minutes down. Causeway. Has been the scene of one com death. Team one now down a man. And they've lost a central linchpin in the center of the map. Managing to contain the area at the moment with though with a little bit of destroyer fire from up here. And some gunships. 
interceptors still featuring quite heavily from Yoji. Maybe he just hasn't had them shot down much yet. He is spamming ASFs as far as I can tell. Oh, and look at that. Whaler T3 gunships entering service. Those glorious cruisers, UEF cruisers, lobbing their cruise missiles inland. And look at the Doctor. He has well and truly landed. Three land factories in play. There are bricks, though, to be concerned about. Has got gun and T2 engineering suite, but we've got nothing in the way of static defences erected here. Lots of inbound missile fire. Now being directed at Ferva's position, or Ferfa's position, down here. We've also got some spearheads and demolishers. So this is going to get well and truly softened up. In fact, I expect this to be gone in the next couple of minutes. T1 bombers coming in to assist. And air superiority fighters from Yoji just covering that position. Wondering whether he needs to go in or not. There's not really that much to save. These are going to die with or without these bombers. How are the bricks getting on? Well, they've encountered a few Percivals from Taffy. But the Percys are well and truly outnumbered. And the Doctor's forward position here looks to be lost, potentially. One badly damaged factory remaining. Vessels for Taffy absorbing the inbound fire for the moment. That factory surviving for a little bit and then getting chopped down to size. There it goes. The Doctor moving in to engage with his comm now that these bricks have been damaged. How very brave of him. <laughs> sensible. It's sensible of him, Guile. That's the word you were looking for. But, uh, yeah, look at the difference here. Yoji just fully in command of this top right-hand corner. And now encroaching solidly over here. But the Doctor is re-emerging. And he's got some help from Taffy. I'm loving this map. And I'm loving this rotational movement we've got going on. But there's still a big lead for Team 1. 522 versus 459. Total mass accrued. We're looking at almost 50k differential between the two teams. It doesn't sound like that much. I suppose it could be an awful lot worse. Let's have a look at Reclaim. Team 1 up there too by about 4k. Shield starting for Kane. Down here in this pond. That's his. It's only his second upgrade. I thought we saw him on a second upgrade a while ago. Maybe he cancelled it. Percy's once again meeting a brick wall. Taffy just needs to reformulate his formation. Land factories going up. All over the shop now in these two positions. What's happening over here as Kane tries to keep out a whole bunch of T1 spam. Oh, that's very cheeky. Build capacity erecting defences at the midpoint. Only T1 defences, but... Burrowing in further nonetheless. The Doctor with a uh, expletive. A nuke? Who's got a nuke? We've got a spy plane out. He's seen something. We've got a nuke right there. It's just been completed. It's Furfer in the backfield. Anything similar from the Doctor? Well, he's getting straight to work on the strategic missile defense. But uh, no, this is a nice rotational play here for Furfer. But look at this. The bricks have, in the intervening period, capitulated, it would seem. And now we've got Percy's looking to mash the main base, or what was the main base, of Psycho. While at the same time, Kane 
making a move to evict Yoji from the plateau north of his position. Yeah, we've got inbound naval fire, but these guys have also got some defensive shielding from these parashields. This is great work here from Taffy and Kane. It's now 513 versus 542. Team 2 slowly catching up in this. Where did those bricks come from? Just when it looked like we were going to get some breakthrough on the Percival front. Were these bricks just ordered too far back and then brought back into the fight? Potentially. Maybe it's another thing we can check on a little speed through rerun at the end of this which I've uh, taken to doing quite a lot actually on the Patreon casts and if you'd like to see that and see ad free content do check it out guys it's a mere dollar a month link in the description below this and all the other videos and while you're down there smash that like and let me know how your day has been I'm dying to hear Come the broadswords. Avenue of attack alive and well on some of these Percy's. It's got enough room from the governors, but they're heading further south. We've got some defending air superiority fighters from Taffy, but he doesn't want to get into a fight on his own. He's going to have to sync up with the doctor on any maneuver here. I think combined, though, that might be a dominant air force from Team 2. Are they going to make a play on these gunships? Oof, some flare fire coming in to hit some of those broadswords. Where is it? It's down there. Team 1 just stalling a little bit here. But they are looking like they're going to make a comeback. Wow, so... He brutalized everything right back to the coastline. Wasn't successful at completely ousting Yoji. And now he's got bricks to worry about once again. Yoji, of course, who's sitting on two base now. Still the remains of Psychos. Kane coming back in with his comm. Engineers working on some artillery. It's uh, another way to help defend the base. It's happening over here. Big old fight. I want to keep an eye on these two theatres. That's the right word. Two fronts, probably the right words. Theatre implies air, ground and sea, doesn't it? Kane defending well. And Yoji defending well also. Combination T1 bombers and Janus deal with that. Yoji has built an experimental. I haven't seen that many of them. We can't be long on that nuke either. In fact, that's very nearly done. Where has Yoji built that experimental? We're looking for a big blue dot. Has anyone seen a big blue dot? Everyone else has seen it except for Guile and is now... There he is. The Monkey Lord. Usually the first experimental to appear on the field. And there goes the nuke. Where is it being directed? We already saw strategic missile defense going up in the doctor's base. He's got one loaded, so he's doing fine. And Ithota on the way for him also. But it looks like it's coming for Kane. And has it been well placed to pick off the comm? No. It has gone deep and is taking out the main base and now it's going to be very very difficult for Kane to hold Yoji off he's lost all his production facilities and this army represents the last of his usable military force and now he's taking a lot of fire from what is a hardy group of Salem destroyers his personal shield has been completely depleted this looks like it was a bit of a mistake. Those destroyers sprout legs and start a pursuit. Kane dodging left, then right. Oh, I don't think he's getting out of this one. Salem's continuing to advance. He's doing the map gen Fandango. 
He's down to 2,700 HP. He has got a Ravager to the north. Oh, there's a Parashield there. Bring it in to cover your comm, sir. Immediately. Sub 1,000 hit points. It's too late. One or two more hits. Oh, my God. Down to 100 hit points. Boom. <laughs> and now the game is leveled. However, the base has been obliterated already by the nuke and there's a lot of a lot of Salem's here which will chew through these titans and now it's going to be expressly difficult for team 2 they are making some headway over here lots of inbound missile fire engineers furiously attempting to cope with it by erecting more zappers and shield gens the while more ground forces are amassing but we have a monkey lord the stealthiest of all experimentals and we don't have any omni coverage at the moment or maybe we do we've got some decent omni coverage i'm talking nonsense where is the omni trying to work out where the midpoint might be for that ring maybe somewhere down here in Taffy's base. Haven't got the time to look for it. There's a clue if they weren't aware. You can see the inbound fire momentarily as it strolled across. Where is it heading? There are the waypoints. So he's coming in on an attack vector down the eastern edge of the map and he can get right in the back of the doctor's base here. However, there is Anithota. If they can just discover this Monkey Lord, they can use that to defend. There's no way the Monkey Lord survives the Ithota. Support commanders out from Furfa. In conjunction with broadswords, providing a good defense here. But the longer this goes on, the less of a base... For, uh, for, for Yoji has in the south. That's the attack vector for, for messaging to his teammate. Nice little drop up onto this plateau section. Oh, could that have been a mistake? Will that Persuade him to bring the Ithota back. Here come the gunships to deal with it. And T1 bombers. They need to get a visual on it to be able to discover it. They haven't got Omni in this area. And I think they might have left it just a little bit too late. Although the Ithota is coming back. Maybe they haven't. No, he's not gone right in. Yoji playing it cool. Where's the Athota headed now? You need Don't to keep it there, sir. Not it. that you know it. Oh, we've got a nuke launcher at the back for the Doctor also. But a second nuke out from Furfa. And this one's going due south. Uh, interesting. It looks like it's going down here. Not sure I would have picked that position. Nothing to stop that nuke from landing. That's going to take out a few mass points, a factory or two. But all in all, this is the unit to worry about. And I like what I'm seeing here. Yoji is planning this very carefully. He's got a spy plane lurking, reading the land. He knows there's an experimental there. That Ithota will destroy the Monkey Lord in an even fight. But if he can get that in, he can wreck this base potentially. There is a lot of T1 point defense covering this avenue of attack. But he just has to get in here and wreck this power grid. Maybe this nuke launcher also. Yet more T1 PDs there are. So the Doctor turtling up pretty hard here. 
expecting the attack. Probably expecting the attack through this direction. That's the view from their perspective, and it's oh balls. <laughs> Support commander's going pop over there as an Ithota dishes out the pain. But the Ithota is not gonna reach the main bases before this monkey lord takes out the doctors. This was actually not badly defended. And yet, look at the damage output. And here comes the chain reaction. Massive, massive damage inflicted to the Doctor's main base. Taffy and Furfa getting into it. Furfa with a huge quantity of air superiority fighters. The Doctor has a decent number of his own also. Doctor just throwing out a GG. He knows he's done. His base is gone. And there's Control K from Taffy also. He just didn't like the way that game was going. It was too secure up here. He actually brought those vessels back to try and encounter some of these encroaching forces on the eastern edge. But wow, what an interesting game. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to quickly go to holding video and we're just going to relaunch and take a look at what happened there because uh, I just want to make sure we did miss that com kill on Psycho. It was around the 20 minute mark. And I think it's absolutely vital. We know because it was the first com to go. So we go to plus 10. And uh, this is what you get as a sticking plaster or band-aid on Guile's attention issues. A quick speed run through just to recap because I know you guys are going to be too lazy to pick up the replay ID and go look for yourselves so we can do it here and we can discuss it. Why not? It's fine. Early game. That was actually pretty hairy for Kane there considering he got the advantage in HP at the beginning. That didn't go badly at all for Psycho initially. And then he gets Kane pretty low and then he runs out of sustainable reinforces and then he has to back off. Nice early play from Team 2 to hit that position. But Yoshi did amazingly well taking out that. And of course the Doctor was not defending this northern edge the way Furfa was. His comm in the middle now getting upgrades. And that really compounded the issue for Kane. It allowed Yoji to advance. And this was never under control from this point on as far as Kane's concerned. So two different approaches. And I think Team 1's worked better sending Furfa down this position. Team 1, who remember, were behind on paper in terms of ability, supposedly. Not that the rankings have uh, any real direct representation. They're just a general guide. Can't uh, take it as, as red. You're going to see a win based on those. Psycho ad now. Ooh, so he has that little encounter. Slow it up a little bit. And then he comes back in. That's a horrible idea. That was a horrible maneuver. So Psycho Ad got himself killed there for no reason. Should have just backed off and moved around back to the main base. There was no reason. I'm mean, All I can think was he was not well informed about the sheer number of Percivals. But he was just in that fight. He knew how many Percys there were there. And uh, got himself killed for no good reason. And that really could have thrown it there for Team 1. They were in good shape up until that point. And that represented a little bit of a comeback. Team 2 had won the bottom pond finally. It took them a little bit longer than it took Yoshi. Yoshi... Remember, in that top bond was completely 
unimpeded. There was no attempt made by Team 2 to set up Navy in the top pond. But yeah, this has been a fun little map. Again, we had a nice little 3v3 map on the premium channel. Which, remember, you guys can check out for a mere dollar. Uh, again, in uh, a map that I'd be happy to see in regular rotation on FAF. This has produced an interesting one today. Can uh, zap it up a bit more. It starts to slow down the sim speed. Of course, as we get into the later stages of the game, there's more stuff on the field. Kane looking like the fight back was real here doesn't finish everything off on the coast but there's lots of stuff coming in from multiple avenues and Yoshi's Navy so very powerful definitely was helpful having a, a Cybran man win that Navy and having the access for those destroyers those naughty Salem's to go sprouting their legs and go on the offensive And I believe it was around 32, 33 minutes when Kane got himself gizzarded. There's the nuke, took out Kane's base. He got all ahead of himself after that recent attack up at the top and didn't respect the sheer naval firepower of Yoji. In come Titans to try and distract those vessels, but they would not be deterred. And down goes Kane. And it's a real shame for Team 2, because they were slowly making headway over here. They had managed to creep their way up the coast. Some four land factories there for Taffy, six below for the Doctor, admittedly all T1. But this was becoming a distinctly difficult situation and here comes the Athota and this was the real shame for Team 2 but of course why wouldn't you use that offensively they were completely unaware of this threat Monkey Lord we've seen it so many times in the past the unscouted Monkey Lord coming in from behind and destroying all of your best efforts nuke out to the bottom from Furfur. Did that even... Is that dead already? Where is the Athota? No, there it is. I just heard it. I can hear it somewhere. There it is. So it's sent in. Monkey Lord, you can see, coming through on the mini-map. How was this getting on? It wasn't making great progress. Oh, there was another Monkey Lord there as well. So, no, wouldn't have made any difference. Would have made zero difference. Team 1 were just ahead. And there we have it. 38 minutes. Who's going to get my MVP? I think it has to be Yoji. I mean, yes, he wasn't... Oh, Yoji or Furfa. I don't know. Furfa had some clutch plays in there. But no, I'm going to give it to Yoji. Nice move down here on the right-hand side with the Monkey Lord. And he played great. Forcing the issue continuously against Kane up at the top. He did have an easy ride early on. I'll give it that compared to others on the map. But uh, yes, well done, sir. You win MVP today. Let me know who you think should be an MVP in the comments below. And while you're down there, smash ye old like, subscribe, and do, for the third time in this cast, check out the Patreon, guys. Best ways to support me. And uh, you can come and jump on the Discord as well and say hello. Always nice to speak to the subscribers. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.